and look for the deflection. Forcing or inviting the dribbler to use his weak hand will cut down on the number of weapons he has to beat you. Do this by placing your body in the path of his dribble and changing your angle to influence him to use his weak hand. Most players are not equally skilled with both hands, even though they should be. Hey, if they have a weak hand, you can bet they don't have better basketballs, better ball handling. Turn him. Make him change hands and directions as many times as possible. This involves overplaying one side, and then when he changes direction, you must swing step, sprint to recover, and then overplay in the other direction, starting the sequence over. Three good things occur when you turn your man. First, all this excess ball handling will increase his chances of turning over the ball. Second, you'll have extra time to detect his weaknesses and flaws. This will allow you to eventually get a deflection or a steal. And finally, this will decrease his chances of spotting an open teammate and making a successful pass. Be careful about forcing the dribbler in one direction. You don't want to give him too much or he'll gain the extra step or space needed to beat you. Consider positioning yourself to shade him to one side. Consider that you're only influencing him in one direction. Learning how to play defense on the dribbler in the irritating manner I've just described takes time and practice. Especially when you're learning, you're going to occasionally get beat. Even accomplished defenders make mistakes and let great ball handlers get by them. But defense isn't over just because they get by you. Here are some tips on recovering. Using your closest hand, tip under the hand of the dribbler as you recover past him. Don't reach across your body or slap down on the ball. You'll get called for the foul. Don't recover directly behind the dribbler. If he stops, you'll run over him and get called for the foul. Sprint to a spot well in front of the dribbler before you turn and break down into a defensive stance. Most defenders make the mistake of trying to close off the dribbler too soon, usually when they're side by side. 99% of the time, the officials call that a foul. If your man is threatening to score before you've recovered, look to run in front of the layup and strip him. Don't take a violent swipe at the ball. You'll get called for the foul. Instead, try to mess with his timing by making him hide the ball and change his steps. Take it. Win by two. Check. Ball in. How your man catches the ball will dictate your initial stance. A bad catch means you can crowd the pivot foot, eating up the space between you. Straddling his pivot leg will allow you to put some pressure on his leg with your legs and affect his balance. Stay down in your stance while you do this because he still has a live dribble. If he shoulders you to create space and gain his balance back, then you need to flop, that is, take the charge. A good catch, one where the offense is threatening to score right away, means you need to close the space carefully. Approach him with very small step slides using what you learned from the closeout maneuver. Get your lead hand up to initially discourage the shot, and then bring your hand down to his shot pocket, allowing you to measure the gap. If the player gets low with the ball, he's a threat to drive. He has no shot pocket, so you can use your lead hand to discourage the sweep. His stance is low, therefore yours must be lower. He must raise up in order to shoot or pass. That's time for you to adjust. If the player gets high with the ball, then he can't drive or shoot. His only option is to pass. Stay in a stance, but eat up the space and go body to body with him. Trace the ball with your hands, crowding his passing lanes and his vision. But remember, he still has his dribble. If he brings the ball down, then you must give a little ground, returning to your standard defensive stance. If the ball's in his shot pocket, then he's in triple threat and very dangerous. 
stay in your stance and use your lead hand to make him move the ball out of his shot pocket and away from the shot line. Now don't get greedy and narrow the gap so much that you can touch his belly button. Being that close, you'll get burned. Your primary goal here is to simply get the ball out of his shot pocket without allowing yourself to be susceptible to the drive. Some of the same principles that are used to influence a dribbler's direction are also used to influence the direction of a player with his pivot. If you have a choice, force him to his weak hand. It's called a weak hand for a reason. Force him to use it. Position your body and stance at such an angle that it leaves him no choice but to go in one direction. Or force him to an out-of-bounds line and use it as another defensive player. You can get a one-man trap. Or force him to a help defender. Or finally, you may need to force him wherever your coach prefers, based on your team's defensive system. Play the drive by reading the offensive player's non-pivot foot, which I call his attack foot. 